Welcome to the next episode of the Supyard Engagement Channel. I am here together with Tony Brown, Marina Director of Porto Montenegro. Nice to see you, man. Nice to be here. Well, um, we're here on a special occasion because we've been invited to do a few things in the marina, but that's not what we're talking about today. I really want to tune in on what made this project so successful, because when I look around, it's filled. The, it looks beautiful, people are friendly, they seem to be well trained, and the, the, this channel is all about finding out how you did that. So may, maybe you want to tune back a little bit in time and tell us a little bit like, what was the vision and how did you come to what this is? Yeah, well, it's a pretty broad question. And so um, I think we do need to go backwards in time a little bit just to really yeah. understand. And I, it, actually, I think the, the real success of Porto Montenegro was born out of the catalyst of the idea that uh, Peter Monk, who was the founding investor, mm. had for Porto Montenegro. Obviously, the site was an old, um, originally Austro-Hungarian, then Yugoslavian military shipyard. Okay. Uh, he discovered it in 2006 and had a vision to turn it into the premier super yacht marina and destination in the Mediterranean. A lot of us who first started thought, are you crazy? How's this ever going to happen <laughs> yeah. in this, you know, area of the, the Balkan Peninsula that had so recently gone through uh, a, a wartime conflict? Um, but no, true to his vision, here we are today. Um, so I think that's the original catalyst. But there's been many steps along the way as to, to how we've, we've got to this point. From its natural geographic location, it's mm. within this beautiful fjord, this Boca Bay, that is naturally protected from the elements. So we don't have any ground swell here. Mm -hmm. um, so for the safety and security of the vessels, it's second to none in the Mediterranean. It really is. Obviously, it's spectacular and, and a really wonderful destination. It's gorgeous down here. I, I must admit, it is gorgeous. And it's got a, a, a high-end tourism uh, legacy as well. So oh. back in the, in the 60s and 70s, um, they were seeing a lot of film stars coming into Montenegro because it is so gorgeous. And, yeah. and why not? It's a place that you'd want to be. Um, but as the marina started to develop, you know, I think there's a few key things that really make a location successful in, in this industry. And it's it's the network that you have around you. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So it's it's a combination of things that really make a, a destination like this successful in this industry as well. So I think the network that you have around you, mm -hmm. um, our, y our yachting industry is really small, as we know. Well, that's the whole point. And like, um, I guess, like, it's, it takes a long time to build a good reputation, but you lose it very easily. Absolutely, industry credibility is, is second to none, really. Yeah. Um, and how do you get that? Well, obviously you, you create the infrastructure that the yeah. yachts need, which mm -hmm. is fairly easy. That's, that's building and development. Yeah. Um, you obviously maintain it very well to make mm -hmm. sure that it's always there and it works and that you follow the trends. Now, the marine industry doesn't you know, evolve that quickly, <laughs> but certainly technological trends do, Wi-Fi, um, fiber optic internet, you know, whatever yeah. it is on board that the boats need. Um, and how do you find out most about that and this is not just about the infrastructure but it's about the whole service offering yeah. you listen to the client you know and i think mm. that's one of the really key important things uh, that we've done which is understanding what the client needs and where marinas within marinas we've got the sort of 12 meters over here and we've got the 100 meters out yeah. there they have different needs and requirements so understanding what they are and doing our very best to fulfill those needs i think is really important like, okay, so you've listened to them, and you you and you constantly listen to them. So I think that's that's tip number one. Like, listen to your clients' needs. But then obviously you get all those needs, but you have to do something with that because otherwise, why would you listen? Absolutely, right? yeah, yeah. Putting in place the solutions that that um, that you've been asked to provide, and you know, in in it's human nature, I think, to yeah. take even constructive criticism as yeah. a criticism. Yeah. But actually. You know, we're really great at saying how great we are. And yeah. quite often people say how great Porto Montenegro is, but what we really like to hear is what's wrong with it. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't know what the problems are, we can't find solutions. Okay. So I think that's really important as well in terms of um, creating a, a, you know, a world leading sort of successful operation that we have here. Yeah, because you consider yourselves world leading already, do you? I think we do. I mean, we, we hear it, so, you know, it's difficult not to, to take <laughs> in that kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> but it's always been our vision as well. Uh, I mean, my, my kind of philosophy, so I, I used to be on yachts. I was running yeah. yachts for about, well, six or seven years yeah. and on board for 10. Um, and the service that we'd provide to the clients on board was 
second to none really. They, they, yeah. they, they receive an amazing service on board and we wanted to try and do that here at Porto Montenegro to give that back to the crew when they came into Porto Montenegro. So they were the people who were receiving that amazing level of service to, to make their life easy. And if their life is easy, then they're going to have a successful charter. But to give them amazing service, you need amazing people. Absolutely. Yeah. So what, so what was the trick or the tip to one, hire those, find those amazing people, but also then or see the talent in them at least and to bring them to a level that they could provide the service, that you, the level of service that you believe is fit for the superior industry? Well, I think number one was um, probably a lot of luck and that yeah. is that we're in Montenegro and the people here are naturally really, really friendly. Yeah. You know, um, I've been here for 14 years now and the, the, the when we first arrived and the local people that opened their doors to us were yeah. so friendly, opening, welcoming yeah. and would give us anything, you know. And I think that's an inherent part of uh, the culture here. Yeah. Um, there's also an amazing sen sense of uh, community and social responsibility here. Mm. So they're very tight knit um, and look after one another. And I think that comes across in that warm, welcoming type um, exterior perception that you get when you when you arrive here. But also, um, in terms of Porto Montenegro, we've got a fantastic HR department. Okay. Um, the marina department itself, so just the, the marina side of our development, we really try and encourage our, our people to continue education and training, um, particularly in customer service. Um, but company-wide, our HR department really looks after our training needs, um, providing both in-house training and then also uh, external consultancy that we, that we bring in. Okay. So you believe like, so investing in people is a key element, not hiring the people. So yeah, yeah. so apart from the luck side, not everybody can be lucky. You were lucky, thank God. Yeah. But like, it's like, so there's a lot of like effort, time, training, spending to those people to bring them to the level. There really is. I mean, if you're trying to deliver a very high end product, you've got to make sure that the people not only have the product knowledge, yeah. which anybody can learn, but also the, the um, tools in order to deliver that in the way that's required um, to be uh, perceived by the clients at the yeah. end of the day. Yeah. It's like what you see a lot like in, in yachting is that people that work for yachting companies, they embrace the lifestyle and sometimes forget that they're there to, well, they're, they're there for the vessels, not for themselves, right? Is that something that like, that you've encountered or is that, is that the part of the luck that the, the Montenegrin are less like that? Uh, I think, um, well, in terms of, you know, onboard life, um, yeah. embracing the lifestyle and, and perhaps, you know, the underpinning industries, yeah. I guess, which, the marina is an underpinning yeah. industry for, or underpinning service for this industry. Um, you know, I think uh, there is an element of seeing the glitz and glam and, and yeah. wanting to be involved in it, but you're not really going to have longevity in the industry if that's all you see. Uh, I think there's personal career development and company development yeah. that is absolutely essential in order to keep up and remain relevant in, in this industry, in any industry. Really. In any industry. Yeah. Well, well, I agree. And like, but I wanted to hear your opinion on that. Like, mm. if we do, let's move on because like, so you built a great team, you, you've got like, you listen to, to what the industry wants and you believe that you've got this world lead, or you believe you have a world-class marina, world leading marina. So how do you get that message out there? Because obviously the next step is you have to make sure that your marina is full. Mm. Well, that is the perennial question now, isn't it? It is. <laughs> and are you willing to share the secret? <laughs> I mean, it, there's so many different avenues and we try so many different approaches. And again, yeah. it moves with the time. So yeah. how did we get the message out there in 2019? Yeah. And I'm not going to say the word, but how did we get it out in 2020? That was a very different year. Yeah. <laughs> and how are we getting it out this year? And partnerships like this, like yeah. Porto Montenegro and A-Crew, yeah. um, the partnership that we've had with you for a few years now and will continue to develop in the future, um, I think really reaching its first pinnacle with the Crew Awards uh, yeah. next year yeah. here in Porto Montenegro. Those kind of partnerships, um, the network that we have with brokers and charter agents um, across the Mediterranean, the personal relationships that I and the rest of the team have with captains and crew on board. Um, obviously, there's all the normal stuff, the social media, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah. I think that that really personalized interaction is, is super important. Yeah, because you, you even told me, I think when was it yesterday or the day before, that you guys call every broker uh, post-season just, to, just to, to have a chat with them, to engage with them again, right? Yeah, well, you know, when a yacht is out there cruising um, and picking up back-to-back -back charters on a busy yeah. season, it's, it's super hectic and 
uh, stressful for all yeah. on board. And so if we can play just a small part whilst the boat is here and the charter broker needs something all of a sudden and, and don't know who to call, yeah. they can just pick up the phone and call us direct and we'll do whatever we can to make their life, the yacht's life, the captain's life, engineer, chef, whoever it is, um, mm -hmm. Will help them fix their problems so that they can, at the end of the day, have a successful charter. Yeah. If they, if the owners are happy, the crew's happy. If they're happy, we're happy. The industry's happy. So, happy yeah. days. Happy days. Well, let's go to those crew because, like, what, like, any destination, especially a, a, a destination port where vessels are located or spend quite a bit of time, the crew is essential. I mean. We all know, like, crew have a, have a say in where they're staying. They're not the decision makers, but they definitely have a say. Is that something that you value within, Mon within Puerto Montenegro, the, the crew in general? Absolutely. I mean, as you know, we have our um, in-house crew club, yeah. which is, it's run, it's a committee that we run within our own um, organization. And again, we listen to the needs, yeah. um, but it's more of a social and interactive based uh, functionality of, yeah. of what we do here. So from the Friday night barbecues to last week, we took everybody to this old rundown um, ruined villa and they yeah. went paintballing, yeah. um, shooting each other up to the winter games that we, we ran together. Um, next week, we've got the uh, Summer Games, which is the summer edition of, mm -hmm. of our, our sporting event for the crew. And obviously this week, we're doing the Spotlight event here, which has got some, some uh, learning and uh, interactive educational experiences and spotlighting crew that are on board boats, which you know has come from you guys, and it's a fantastic initiative. Well, well thank you for that. Like, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to make very clear it's not about me this time. <laughs> Today is about Puerto Montenegro and about like what you guys have done. So, because like, we, we, we've seen the facilities. I mean, uh, they, they build a full... Well, it's not like a crew house because basically it's, it's, it's open to everybody, right? Like when we go to the, the member lounge, the crew can come there, they've got their own area, but they also mingle with the locals and other guests. How, how, do, you, how do you see that? Because that's not, like, let's say, that's not allowed everywhere. Well, it's a good point. So, um, again, I, I mentioned uh, finding the problems or, or um, realizing the problems so that we can find a solution. Yeah. One of the problems that we do have here is not necessarily with the marina, but we don't have the backdrop of Antibes or Parma or mm -hmm. Barcelona. Yeah. We don't have a big city for crew to escape into yeah. for the weekend, um, which which does two things. Talking to captains, you know, the crew like to escape into the weekend into the cities for the weekends, but. What they find here is that the crew really gel together yeah. because you don't get one or two going this way, one or two going that way. They tend to do something as a big group yeah. um, here in Montenegro. So the Blue Room is an example, which is our sports bar with yeah. a big arena. Uh, we run a lot of our barbecues up there. Those barbecues are for the crew, but we do get a lot of you know expats and locals, yeah. locals coming. And it just adds to the dynamic. You know, it's not overrun by um, too many people yeah. and it adds to that kind of collective social dynamic. Assuming that we can we can do these things in, in normal times with uh, yeah, yeah well, we, we're just assuming that like yeah. we're just assuming that we are there's light in the tunnel yeah let, 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 let's 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 say it that way yeah. but recapping a little bit listening to the needs of your customers and actually acting on that what I like what you said is like um, criticism is also feedback eh? and something that you need to listen to educating teams building teams putting a lot of effort into them, helps you bring customer service to the point that you want to have it. And if we then look at the crew who are basically in the end your clients, eh? you basically give them a, a home? Is that too much to say? No. Um, I mean, it is a, a, a transient lifestyle. I think crew love to be in one location for a period of time, yeah. but if it extends too long. Um, yeah. They kind of wonder why they got into yachting in the first place, I think. They like to move and explore different places as well. Um, so whilst we'd like to have, you know, the boats chained to the dock so they could never yeah. go anywhere and we could be full <laughs> all the time, that transient as aspect is, is really good. But in terms of home-based boats, you know, we have a few captains now who, uh, we have an international school, of course, here yeah. that's run by uh, Knightsbridge. Um, they base the boat here in the winter, they'll charter out of here or yeah. they'll go away for the season, come back in the winter. They have a house here, their family lives in the house and the kids go to the local school, our local international okay. school. So it is, um, it's it's still early, but it's really becoming that home-based destination. And actually one of the other things that we identified very early on in terms of um, lack of infrastructure is the shipyard. And obviously across the way here, um, you can't see it, but we can see it over there. Um, 
We've got a new facility that uh, will be opening. Um, watch this space for the dates that it'll be opening. Watch this space. But that's the final piece of the puzzle, I think, because you know many of the captains say to me, okay, we'd love to come and spend the winter with you guys, um, but I need my five-year survey. What's the closest place? Well, it's just over there now. Yeah, <laughs> just go. Uh, watch this space for the dates. Let's round this up. Thank you so much for your time. I want to get that. Any company, not so, not only destination, just companies that say like, I want to improve my footprint in the superyard industry. What's the tiff of Tony Brown, who's been doing, who's been on vessels, who's been doing this for 14 years? What's your key tip to anybody who wants to improve their footprint in the industry? The yeah. million-dollar question. <laughs> um, positive, good vibes and energy. Yeah. Um, hard work and dedication. It all sounds a bit cliche, but really it's not rocket science. No. Work hard, go out there with positivity, good energy, um, get good people around you. Yeah. Um, depending on your level in, in, in what it is you're doing, you can't do everything yourself. So never be afraid to get somebody else to, to do what needs to be done. Yeah. Um, have that fantastic team around you and uh, be honest. So, Thank you so much. Tony Brown, Marina Director at Forte Montenegro. Thank you so much for sharing your insight. Thank you so much for sharing your tips and knowledge. Highly appreciate it. And looking forward to a few great days ahead and to a long collaboration together. Likewise, I know. Thanks uh, for, for being here. Thanks for doing this. Yeah. I hope it's helpful. And um, yeah, the next couple of days are going to be great, I think. Thank you. Brilliant. Yeah. Oh, I don't know what we're doing. <laughs>